Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Chris. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you very, I am very well. Thank you very much. All right, let's qualify you first of all. Um, your book opens up a few pages about yourself, um, which means you know explains to the reader that you are the real deal. Back in 1991, we were both 25, living different, uh, very different lives, and you were about to lead men into combat for the first time in Desert Storm at the age of 25. That's right. Yeah. Tell, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, 25. So uh, I was a platoon commander. I commanded a reconnaissance platoon in the uh, Third Fusiliers. Uh, 29 years ago, actually, almost to the day, I think we uh, launched combat operations in as part of Desert Storm. Um, so yeah, it's a huge experience for me, and, and really, you know, even though I'd come out of Santa s- sort of four years earlier, it was my first real, you know, leadership challenge, significant leadership challenge, where it suddenly dawned on me the enormity of the task ahead and how important it was that I led my men as well as I possibly could. Literally led your men into battle, yep. for real. Yeah. Okay, at the age of 25. Now, when you're 14 and 15, 25 sounds quite old, but when you're 53, like we are now, sounds quite young. How was it? Um, well, I'm still here, so um, it, uh, it it worked okay. I think I think the the big thing I talk about, and I talk about it in the book, was you know when you're sitting there ready to go and you're, you're thinking through the enormity of the task ahead, there were three things that sort of that, that motivated us to do what we did and, and the first thing was well the whole thing was about belief firstly belief in yourself that you're good enough that you've been trained well and you're ready to go and you've got the confidence to go and do what you've got to do the second thing is belief in in the team around you the the men either side of you who are you know you, you're putting all that trust in them and they're putting their trust in you that they're going you're going to look after them and then thirdly belief in in the in the task ahead you know what you've got to go and do and the people who are leading you um and and i felt you know as i say in the book you know nervous frightened uh, but once it started, you know, all that melts away because you have this amazing confidence that you're going to be okay. And, you're well, going to do and you have this hard, hard drive of training, don't you? And so yeah. that takes over in a way. And I suppose that the message from the book, from, from an ex- extreme circumstance, extreme training, you know, beyond anything most of us can imagine, uh, let alone experience, is you take that and the arc, then you drop, you parachute those um, values uh, and those rituals and, and that training and those, those very helpful, positive, constructive habits into real life. And it's so useful. Yeah. And that's what that's that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and what they're designed to do with the army, from what and I've read your book and I loved your book, um, is it they're designed to free the service personnel up to have extra capacity to make decisions in a pressurized situation because all the other stuff will be within them already. Yeah. It's hardwired into them. Yeah. And that's what we need in life because life, when life is confusing and it's turbulent, it's exhausting. Mm. And we can miss out on the gold in many ways, can't mm. we? You yeah, know? absolutely. Uh, Vi- victory of another kind. Yeah, and I think, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's about getting the small things right, forming habits, yeah. habit forming, which is you know skills and drills, that just becomes second nature. So when you are under pressure, you haven't got to think about doing doing the doing the the, the mundane stuff that's going to keep you alive from operating your weapon system, whatever it may be, because you've got to think about other things. Yeah. The things you haven't prepared for that will come at you from left and, and right. And you have the space, mental capacity yeah. to think about those yeah. things. And you may never have to think about anything, but the the lifeboat is there. The mental lifeboat is there. Should you need it? Absolutely. Right now, Rachel uh, was talking about <laughs> Billie Eilish's song uh, "No Time to Die" uh, because there's an issue at your son's school, which <laughs> it apparently helps with. Now we will get back to you in a second. This this all works. But trust me on this one. Okay. So go. his class, he's in year six, and they're always out way after the bell rings at ten past three. And so their teacher has started playing the Billie Eilish song at five past three because it's four minutes long so about five past three he's like right kids get yourselves ready to go because we've got to sort out the bags sort out the books put stuff away in their drawers he's like you've got four minutes and now he plays the song and by the end of the song they've got to be lined up by the door right. and he started doing it this week and it has genuinely made such a difference because we've all parents have been standing in the playground going oh where's year six they're late again <laughs> and now they're coming out on time right so that's one way of doing it yes. okay you could also set your watches to Sandhurst time oh. tell us about Sandhurst time Sandhurst time is five minutes before you have to do something. So very similar to year six at the school. You know, it's giving, yeah, but if you get there five minutes before you have to be there, you'll always, you'll always be on time. And, and for us, time is everything because you know, a lot of operations start at a thing we call HR. That, you know, that's the time where everything happens. All the, all the effects are synchronised to happen at that particular time. If you miss that, that's bad. Other people are waiting on you. Other people might be 
you know, caught short. So you, you're always there five minutes before. It's just drilled into us from the start. Right, let's just go through through the uh, titles of the chapters in the book because that's the best way to sort of hit this uh, in the kind of interview form that we have available to ourselves today. Um, chapter one, The Sandhurst Way, the life-saving magic of tidying up. Now, this is so simple, right? But it puts you, it puts you in such, such, a, such a helpful frame of mind for the rest of the day. Yeah. Explain the philosophy behind this. And this is a 200-year-old philosophy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean... You know, it's about getting the small stuff right. So it's about taking care of your equipment, taking care of your kit, making sure your room's in a good place, you know, making sure you are ready to go and we get inspected first thing in the morning and you know, if it's not right you have to you have to show again. But it's it's not you know, it's about it's about having discipline, it's about having standards, it's about having a sense of pride in yourself. And if you get the first bit right the first bit of the day. Correct. And this is this is early before you do anything else. If you get that bit right, then you have a sense of achievement, you have a sense of pride in yourself and you know, hopefully it sets you up. How can shining your shoes save your life? Well again, shining your shoes is about having pride in yourself and, and, and looking good, but also there's a practical purpose. And we try and say in the book it's not, a, not necessarily all about having a spotless shine it's about taking care of your footwear and you know if you look after your footwear then you look after your feet if you look after your feet then you you're still combat effective if you if you have poor feet if your feet go wrong you're no use to anyone yeah if you if you don't look after your feet you could lose literally lose the war because it's not just you that you debilitate but then if you're out in the field uh, then you, your mates are going to have to look after you yeah uh, and this this is reducing effective numbers yeah and we're all we're all about teams and if you know if you for whatever reason you become non-effective, then you are a huge part of the team lost. So that's that's how, that's simple, isn't it? That's how looking after your feet can help you. But what's great about your book, there's so many things that are great about your book, but but they explain, you know, how this is what we do at Sandhurst. This is why it might work in, in real life. And then they give you the Sandhurst way to clean your boots, the Sandhurst <laughs> way to make your bed. How do you do the Sandhurst hospital corners? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, so many people have said, you know, well, crikey, you have duvets now. And we do have duvets eventually, yeah. but to start with, they have to learn how to make the bed. And again, it's about you know getting the small things right. Right. Why do army officers make the best wedding planners? Um, this is well. This is about um, thinking logically through a problem, and we have uh, various ways of doing it. One of the things we have is a thing called the seven questions, which is it's designed as a sort of mental checklist to take you through how you approach a difficult situation, how you approach a problem, and we we get taught it. We get taught how to go through it. So again, when you're faced with a difficult decision to make mentally you're going through the seven questions asking yourself you know what do i need to what do i need to do this how do i need to approach it you know what what resources do i need so actually going through planning a wedding is the same as going through planning a combat operation you've just got to go through the questions and make sure you get the right factors lined up right so the showbiz version of that because we we because we, we're coming from you know both sides of the same crease here the showbiz version of that is um when people come to me and they say you know we're planning a wedding right so we need to get you in to, to do the, all the Organization, so we need to get your lot in to do the organization. We should form a company, right? And then I say, well, you've got to keep the entertainment good. You've got to keep the people engaged, and you've got to tell a story. And you know what? What kind of time do you want the guests to have? You know, do you want them to? You know, so, so wedding, sometimes some wedding parties are killed by the fact there's that two hours of pre-reception, you know, drinks on the lawn where everybody drinks too much. They don't really want to talk to you. They just want to get on with it. And the photographs take yeah. forever. Oh, the photo. You know, it's like no, no, because you're slowing everything. And by the way, if it, if a, if an event, a potential entertainment event, or th if something you want to be entertaining, event starts slow, it only gets slower, right? So if you if you're planning a wedding, we get you guys out. You, you give us the blueprint. You make sure everything's secure and safe, and all everything's been ordered, and all the boxes have been ticked. And come on, everything's literally ship shape. Um, can I say that? Ship shape. Ship shape's all right. You don't, yeah, you don't mind? Okay, sorry. Yeah. No, tank shape or whatever you want to call it, right? And then we come in and we go right. Okay. Half everything, half everything, half the ser order of service, half the the, the speeches, just just half the number of guests. Get get me we need some new blood at seven. So they, these look, these look won't last till six. So you might those still. That's what you need. It's, it's the same kind of thing, is it? It's the same kind of thing. I love it. Okay, uh, why is five fifty five a.m. the most important time of the day? At Santos, that's the time they get up, and that's the time that, that the Ravale. Yeah, that's Ravale, and that's the time they've got their to get themselves sorted out, ready for the inspection at six. But I think later on in the book, we talk about early early morning and getting a routine. Yeah. And um, we talk about uh, long days, short weeks. That's a, that's a saying at Sanders because the days seem very long because you get up very early and go to bed quite late. 
But I think we talk about, you know, get, getting a routine in the day is probably quite a good thing. And I, and I, and I think you as well, quite like to do physical exercise first thing in the morning. Know, you do, do you know, I read about this last night because I couldn't run today because of what's going to happen later on today. And I was, it made me really, I was like, oh, I'm going to really miss my run you tomorrow it, morning. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because, but, because? Well, I just think, again, it's, it's uh, not everybody, not everybody wants to exercise in the morning. But I think for me, exercise in the morning is, is a release. It's also gives me time to think. And I think like, like, you know, achieving something, you know, I, I feel motivated for the rest of the day and is it true that before you have big meetings or big speeches you would go for a run beforehand to get everything not, oxygenated or not all the time but that, that's where i i mean people have different ways of thinking about things and how reflecting about things and i i choose to do it whilst i'm running what i love about your book and it's not it's you know it's it's not a big book it's like it's what is it how many pages it's 130 odd pages long it's one of those lovely uh, there's, a, there's a new size of book it's the one that ikigai is in and all those lovely books from japan and it's that size and it's that size on purpose they have a special place in the bookshops now books of this size and they're really useful. But what I love about this book is we get endless people here through through the door. So the footfall of self help books, which we love by the way, and welcome and will always do through here, is is sort of infinite. But your book says it all, and also it's been put into practice because it it's a matter of life and death for you guys, isn't it? Yeah. You have the ultimate stakes here. It's not about profit and loss. It's not about losing half a half a stone here and there. It's about it's about this could save your life. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and you've been doing it for years. Yeah, and also we're also um, we're very proud of it. You know, we've yeah. we've uh, we, we we're very you know we we are what we are because of what we learn at Santos. You know, every officer goes there and revered throughout the world. This this place. Yeah, it is. It's you know it's a it's a world class leadership academy. Okay, um, make your best nature second nature. Tell us about that. Um, well, this is about be yourself and and um, you know a, a bit about values you know yeah. values based um living by those values and we talk about in there the leadership code and that's about you know the army has six core values that when you arrive at sanders you arrive anywhere in, in basic training you know you're told that if you want to be a soldier or an officer in the british army you have to live by these values yeah. um and and then you know santos teaches you how to apply those values and turn them into leadership behaviors and so the big the big motto of santa serve to lead is about example uh, and you know, being the example to to those who follow you, or men and women who follow you, and to be the example, you have to live by values. You have to live. You have to live the message as opposed to just give the Absolutely. message. Okay, this is great. This one: the way you spend your day is the way you live your life. And we often try and separate the two, don't we? We do do that. We say, "Well, today I'm going to be like this," but that's not that's not who I am. Well, no, it is. It is absolutely who you are because today is your life. Today is the advert for the rest of your life. Yeah, and don't you know, don't put off, you know today what you you know all those sort of things and also having a sense of purpose and giving yourself you know aiming points throughout the day or through your life it's it's the same having a and we talk about having command time you know time to think you know we we, we find that very important in terms of finding a place in the day where you've got time to think through things think through to the finish give yourself thought time yeah because people i mean everyone's busy i get that and everyone's got lots to do uh, but sometimes you just got to take a bit of time out and, and think through things. I heard a great tip um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, give ten minutes of the of, of tonight to two or three hours of tomorrow. Yeah. You know, if you can sow the seed, t- five or ten minutes, whether it's prepping your bag or getting something ready that you think I'll leave that till the morning. No, do it tonight because yeah. it just sets you, gives you a head start tomorrow. Yeah, same kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So you talk about sleep as well, don't you? Yeah, sleep hugely important, and, and you know we haven't always been good at that in the army, and I think we've woken up in the last few years, particularly at Santos. <laughs> How ironic! <laughs> How ironic! But uh, but uh, you know, uh, sleep's important because that's when you that's when you grow, that's when you mend, um, yeah. particularly your brain. That's where it where, where it recovers. And so, you know, we talk about, you know, you've got to have about six and a half, plus six and a half hours sleep a night, seven, eight hours perfectly. So that's what we try and encourage. And the more spent you are in the day, because you said you have to get the cadets back, uh, the commander cadets, uh, the officer cadets back in bed for half, ten sort of latest to get up for six-ish. But you say, actually, that's not that difficult because they're so knackered by the end of the day. <laughs> well, they're tired, but they all, they all seem to find time to go on social media at night. So, you know, in the old days used to be lights out, but now perhaps it should be Wi-Fi off or something. Wi-Fi I don't know. off, yeah. all right. Um, now, what's really important, and you, this is the first message in the book, is that Sandhurst may not be what you think. Tell us about that, because that's such an important message to get out there. Yeah, I think I think there is a perception out there that Sandhurst is for you know privileged, the privileged, because you know, Watch people. yeah, I and think you, that, you used to be able to buy your way into it. Used to be in the old days, yeah, you used to buy your commission, and that's where you went. But and, and I think what we're trying to get across here is that Sandhurst is about, and as you said, it's the it's a world class leadership academy. It's about finding potential in people and bringing it out of them. We don't care your, where your background, we don't care 
colour of your skin, your sex. Where, where we, what we do care about is you've got... Or sexuality. Good, or sexuality. It's about, are you good enough? And are you good? have you got that leadership potential do that we can bring out to you? you want to be good enough? Yeah, absolutely. And, we, and people do go through a selection process to get to Sandhurst. And you are selected based on your ability. Fact. It's just great to meet you. Honestly, it's really cool to meet you. I can't believe we're the same as you fought wars and I've made... Don't forget your toothbrush. But, <laughs> um, right, you're out soon, aren't you? I am. How, how many weeks, months? Uh, four weeks left. Four weeks left. How does that feel? Uh, exciting and daunting in equal measures. Okay, emotional? Yeah, I'm very emotional. I've had a fantastic time. I've loved every, well, not every second, but I've loved, a, I've loved my time. It's been a great adventure, so I'm going to miss it. How old were you when you joined? I was 19. And how did you get in? Uh, I went through the selection and went to Santa's. All right. Yeah. And what were your first um, thoughts on Sandhurst when you finally got to get through those gates? I mean, obviously, you, I would imagine you were in love with the place straight away. Uh, I wouldn't say in love with the place straight away. I mean, I mean, when you arrive there as a cadet, it's all 100 miles an hour and, you know, people are telling you to do this, that and the other. So it takes a bit of time to sink in, but it is an amazing place. Uh, I think, you know, for me, it was it was six months of, uh, of, of amazing training, but I didn't appreciate it until I went to my battalion afterwards and I realised just how great it had been. Good for you. And um, how does a major general leave? How do I physically leave? No, or... what are you going to do? How does it work? How does that, how does that goodbye, the long goodbye work? Well, I'm going I'm to um, well, hand over my job. Um, so I'll hand over a job to someone coming in behind me and make sure that's in good yeah, order. Talking about the know, fun stuff. Santos is great. But then, then I'm going to leave yep. uh, and I'm going to... Take a bit of advice from my own book and no, take no, it. No, but how are you, how are you going, what are you going to do? Oh, do you have a week celebration or do you? A week celebration? No. What, what happens? I, I'll have a, a, they're going to very kindly dine me out, it's called, where I'll have a big dinner and they'll say farewell and I'll see all my mates and say goodbye. How big is a big dinner at Sunhurst? Uh, pretty big, yeah. <laughs> pretty big. Looking forward to it. Pretty really legendary. <laughs> okay, because the thing is, it's on the back of the book. Why, why do army officers make the best wedding planners? I bet they do a great goodbye, do as well. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> All right, listen, it's a real joy to meet you. Uh, so so proud to have uh, you looking after us. Thank God for you guys. Uh, stand up straight, 10 life lessons from the Royal Military Academy in Sandhurst with Major General Paul Nansen. As Thanks, good as it gets. You're very welcome. Seriously, any time. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky.